What's up everybody, my name is Takuma Matsui, I'm a producer and instructor here at 343 Labs in New York City. This is a follow-up to our last video on Live's modulator devices, and this time we're deep diving into the envelope follower device. As always, the session file that I'm using for this video is available for download so that you can follow along as I go. Let's get started! I'm starting out with a little bit of music. Let's check it out. Here's the bass patch in solo. I have operator, OTT, Shifter for ring modulation, saturator for color, and phaser for tone. Now again, I want to modulate some of the parameters inside of this device chain. But instead of a continuous modulation like an LFO, I want the modulation here to be reacting to specific events in the music. This is where the envelope follower device comes in. I'm going to open up Live's browser using Command Option B, head on down to Audio Effects, under Modulators, here's my Envelope Follower device. Now instead of the bass, I'm going to click and drag this down to my snare group. Now Envelope Followers detect amplitude variations or changes in loudness to generate control signal. Now I have this device on the snare group, meaning that every time the snare hits, We're going to get control signals the shape of the snare. I'm going to solo both the snare and the bass. And let's assign a modulation to one of the parameters in the bass patch. Like the LFO device, I'm going to click map. It starts blinking. Let's head on over to the bass track. And let's select parameter. I'm going to select the feedback of my phaser device. Now here's what we have. We can see that the feedback parameter is reacting to the snare hit, but it seems like the range of the control signal is not wide enough. We can see this visually on the device. Here's my snare. To fix this, I'm going to head on back to my snare track and add gain to this control signal. Now we get a greater spike in the control signal. Now we can shape this control signal using the rise and fall parameters here. Rise adds an attack portion to the control signal. And fall adds a little bit of decay time. Delay offsets the control signal in milliseconds. As with the LFO, we can open multi-map and assign this control signal to multiple other parameters. I'm going to press map, head on over to my bass track, and I'm going to modulate the frequency of my ring modulation. For my third parameter, I'm going to modulate the filter cutoff on my operator. Let's limit the range of modulation so that the filter doesn't close all the way. And here's what I got so far. Now, I like where this is going, but I want to go one step further. I want this envelope follower to trigger another modulator so that we can create a more complex control signal. I'm going to unmap all of the parameters here. Instead, I'm going to drop an LFO here. 
open multi-map, and assign this LFO to the same parameters in my base patch. Let's click map. My phaser feedback. Back to my LFO. Now modulating my shifter. Last but not least, my filter cutoff. Here's what my bass sounds like. Let's speed up my LFO. Now I'm going to map my envelope follower to the depth of my LFO. It means this LFO is only going to kick in when it receives a control signal from the envelope follower. Just for fun, I'm also going to map this envelope follower to my LFO rate. Let's limit the range of modulation. Cool. And finally, in the context of the track. Envelope followers give you a different flavor of modulation, one that reacts to musical events. Again, you saw that combining modulators give you so much more flexibility in how we shape control signals. I hope you found this video to be helpful. My name is Takuma Matsui, here with 343 Labs in New York City. For more information on our courses in New York, Berlin, and online, check us out at 343labs.com. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you all next time.